So today we're here in the Peak District for another round of extreme printing. Uh, the concept behind extreme printing is essentially showing people that printing is fun and that it is the final part of any image's journey. Uh, so going into different locations that you wouldn't normally, getting ourselves outside of our comfort zone, taking some pictures and printing. So today we're out with uh, photographers Doug Chinnery and Paul Sanders, uh, Ben Brain from Digital Camera Magazine, we've got Sam Gregory from Togcast and Sam Hertz behind the camera making a video of all of this and then myself from Photospeed and, and Vince as well. Why are we with them? I think because they understand what we're trying to achieve here. It's, there's no huge commercial gain benefit to this project, it's really Let's go out and have some fun. Photography's fun, it's our hobby. Let's go out and have some fun and do something that nobody else is doing. Push ourselves a little bit further and a little bit sort of more extreme. Living the dream. Oh. Being a photographer is a life of glamour and travel. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the photographers so far today, it's, it was very, very wet this morning. Trying to trying to find that right image and and then edit on location. It also by editing on location, it strips everything back. It makes sure that you're not spending hours thinking, tweaking, retweaking, final tweaking, final, final tweaking. It's strip it back, make an edit, print it. Okay, Doug, so we're here in this second location and it's, uh, it's cleared up a bit. Yes. It's not persistent rain anyway. <laughs> um, and there's lots of lovely autumnal colour. Yeah. So what are, you, what are you looking at here with a view to, to what you're spotting in the landscape and then with a view to the actual print as well? Okay, so um, what we've got here is a beautiful silver birch woodland. Um, the silver birch bark is sparkling now. A bit of light on it, so uh, that's coming to life. And uh, the foliage is just turning that lovely golden colour that we get with silver birch which is really nice. There's still a bit of green as well. Uh, so we're just getting that, it really sort of comes to life in these conditions, which is nice. Uh, there's a little bit of a breeze, which is nice for me. Yeah. Um, probably not nice for Paul, because he well. probably wants it to stay nice and still. Uh, but for me, a little bit of movement is good, because that'll complement what I'm doing with moving the camera. So I'm just experimenting. I've been doing some multiple exposures just to see how that works. Uh, the first thing I would say is paper choice is really important. Um, and with these autumnal colors, um, I would immediately start thinking about maybe using the Photospeed Smooth Cotton 300 paper, the one that Joe Cornish designed with Photospeed. Um, all, all papers have a white point, um, a bit like white balance, uh, you can think of it in a similar kind of way. Smooth Cotton 300 tends to inject a bit of life into prints. And uh, so for these autumnal colours, immediately my, my mind is thinking ahead to the print always, mm. and uh, I would be thinking about using that paper. So we've, we've caught up with Paul. How, do you, how are you feeling about this location at the moment and what, what's kind of appealing to you or what's proving difficult even? It's a really interesting location. Um, I love all the, the, the trees and the lines that they produce, but finding them that have the right rhythm for the kind of picture that's sort of forming in my head is proving a bit elusive at the minute. And the light's not particularly good, although it is improving, which will bring out the highlights in the silver birch trunks a little bit for me. But uh, yeah, this is quite challenging because it's not my normal no. thing. You could say I'm out of my comfort zone a little bit, which is quite nice. That's good um, sometimes, isn't it? It's really good because if you get sort of, in, if you shoot always in your comfort zone, you become very complacent and pictures stop talking to you. Whereas if you push yourself out of your comfort zone, you might start by being a bit frustrated and finding it a little bit like wearing your shoes on the wrong feet, but actually, 
it starts to, to work, you start to see things, you start to become a little bit aware. I'm looking for shapes and texture that I can then, I've got a kind of a low key image in my head and I'm just looking for the right combination of trees to bring that together. Uh, because in black and white, the, the foliage in my, when I interpret it, will be quite dark. Um, and I like the way the white punches out at you, but it's, um, it's finding the right combination of trees and the right tree in the foreground to have the right sort of patterning in the background with enough separation between the trees to allow what little bit of light there is to filter through in the background to sort of lead you through it. So we're thinking, you're thinking black and white though already? I it just, it's always black and white. I'm not really into colour. I like the textures and the, the contrast rather than the colours. Um, I find colour distracting. So, so is it fair to say you, you're walking around seeing in black and white? Yeah, as, trying as to. much as you can. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to ignore the colour. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think it's important, firstly, that when anybody's going out to shoot images, which they will print, to be thinking about what paper that's going to be used on. That will influence how you shoot. Uh, today we've come out with a signature range of papers. So we've got the Platinum Brighter, Natural Soft Textured Bright White, Smooth Cotton 300, and the Platinum Etching. And we've used all four of those so far for different images. And speaking to Doug and to Paul, they've both said when they've been composing their image, they, they knew what paper that was going to be printed on even before they'd hit the shutter. Okay, Doug, so we've got the final image printed, taken just a few minutes ago. So just talk us through maybe the, the techniques that you used to shoot that um, particular image or the combination of images. Okay, so for variety, I thought I'd go for a multiple exposure image because we did ICM earlier this morning. Um, and it really suited the autumn foliage in the silver birch woodland that we've got here. Um, so I went for bright mode, which uh, as it, sounds highlights the lighter tones uh, in the image so it captures the sparkle in the leaves and the brightness uh, on the trunks of the silver birch trees and what bright mode also does is it tends to start to eliminate the darker tones in the image so the darker branches and things like that um, so i used three frames on this image um, I, uh, the first frame um, i slowed the shutter right down by narrowing the aperture going down to about um, F22, slowing the shutter down, moving the camera, so that's like an ICM shot, it gives me a wash of blur, so that's what gives the softness to the image, and you can see um, uh, the image is not sharp, and that's mainly from the first frame, uh, which gives this softness, and uh, sort of like a wash of colour, and that also diffuses the background a bit, and gets rid of some of the noise from all the branches of the trees behind this main silver birch that I'm photographing. And then I overlaid on top of it a couple of, couple of sharper frames uh, by ticking the aperture down um, uh, and so, or, go, or going wider with the aperture down to about f5.6. That speeds the shutter up um, and it still looks soft but those two frames actually are quite a bit sharper. But because of that first image it still keeps a nice sort of soft gentleness. I think that just gives it a, a nice painterly feel. Um, and then in the processing, I just emphasise the more autumnal colours uh, in the uh, in the image. Uh, so it just gives it a bit of a I don't know a bit of a watercolory feel to it. I don't know, uh, and that ties in nicely with the paper, the Smooth Cotton 300 uh, that we were talking about earlier, yep. uh, which has got a warmth to it, and that just brings the autumn colours up and gives it a bit of a glow, which I like. Okay, so maybe let's talk about what it's like to have the print in your hand so soon after shooting the images and how you might reflect back on that in the future as well. Yeah, this is quite unusual. Obviously, we, there's always a, a disconnect between taking the image and processing. And often with the way I work, it, it's often weeks or even months sometimes between me making my images and getting time to process them. So this was a really interesting experience. Actually being here just a few yards from the trees I was shooting uh, was quite a nice experience uh, being able to look back at the trees look at the colors although I'm not interested really in representational photography I'm not trying to exactly duplicate what I see whereas many landscape photographers are trying to be quite representational um, I'm interested more in an artistic uh, interpretation of the landscape I'm more interested in the emotions of how I feel uh, and also um, bringing out, I don't know, more of the life of what I see and 
uh, more, more of, in this case, a sense of movement and so on. Um, but it was still lovely to be able to work on it here um, and then, then to have it in my hands. Um, I wondered if when I printed it, I would want then to go back and fiddle with the image and maybe make some changes. But actually, the first print that came out, I was quite happy with, if I'm honest. Um, happy with the paper choice and happy with the colours uh, and the textures. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I think um, the printer manufacturers need now to make a, a waterproof, a rugged printer to take into the field with a built-in battery pack. I think there, there, may, be, uh, there may be some mileage in that, yeah. <laughs> okay, Paul, so let's just talk about um, what it's like to hold the print so close to where you just took it. Uh, do you know, it's a, it's a really wonderful experience. Um, there's a lot of pressure this morning because there's a lot of people here and I'm not used to working like that. So I found this location really hard. But to come away with a picture in the camera and then, you know, sort of walk a couple of hundred yards and actually print it out, there's something really incredible about it. Um, it sort of, it always completes the connection when you get the print, but it's really special when you get the print in the location. Um, you know, especially a sort of proper print, not like a little Polaroid type um, one. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a real challenge, but I've really enjoyed it. Um, everybody should take their printers to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> your, your image is quite different from Doug's, and I think that's great. And <laughs> yeah. no, I, think, yeah. I think it's worked both ways and this morning as well. Yeah. So how did you come to see this image in the woods? Because you started, just walk us through your process a little bit. Um, when I started looking for a sort of, I'd got an image in my head of just sort of tree trunks and ferns, and I just couldn't find the right composition. And it was almost like I was too close, so I couldn't see the wood for the trees, if you'll excuse the pun. Um, and then I sort of stepped outside the woods and I saw this little copse and I thought, actually, I quite like that little clump of trees. So I just kind of mooched around until I found a spot that wasn't filled with water. And then I decided to shoot it as a pano because I didn't think it quite worked. The wide angle just pushed it too far away and the, um, the telephoto was kind of a bit in the face. So um, I shot it as um, it's six shots um, and then just quickly stitched together in Lightroom. Um, it needs a little bit of refinement, I think, as a, a print. If I was at home, I'd have probably done it slightly differently. But when you're outside, the light on the screen you know, you can't quite see what you've got, um, but uh, for something that was done minutes after taking it, I'm actually really pleased with it, <laughs> which is unlike me. But I, I mean, I see the world in black and white. I mean, I love Doug's picture because it really does reflect the light and the colours that are here, but I don't see the world like that. And I'm looking at it thinking, oh, I wish I could see that way. I see everything as sort of black and white and, you know, a few shades of grey in between. Um, no, but that's what makes it all so wonderful, mm. is that we come here, we see it very differently. Um, we both ended up with very different images, but actually the shared experience has been very similar. This is Photospeed's panoramic range of paper, yeah. obviously, which makes images like this much more possible without having to have a huge, a huge setup, amount of white. Yeah. Because this can be done on a A3 printer. Yeah. Um, so this is the smooth cotton, is that it right? It is, yeah, smooth cotton 300, which I have to say is my favourite paper. I like the other, some of the other papers, but this is the one I print on most because I, I like the sort of the sharpness that it gives. Because a lot of my work is really soft and wishy-washy anyway, so I don't need to make it any more sort of fuzzy. So I like the punch that this paper gives, um, and I tend to always print on the same one. It was just handy that they had a box of it in the woods. It's amazing <laughs> what you find in the woods. 